Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for season 15 episode 7 and the guests were season 15 contestant Mistress Isabel Brooks, UK season 2 winner Lawrence Cheney, and season 11 contestant slash judge of Canada's Drag Race Brooklyn Heights. Today we're going to be talking about Mistress Isabel Brooks' issue with Aura Mayari, Brooklyn Heights denies that she had no power on Canada's Drag Race, and Todrick Hall's comments about Drag Race episodes going back to 90 minutes. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Please note that because we're going to be talking about the outcome of certain episodes of Drag Race, there is a spoiler alert in place for this video. So first of all, host Nasha Lopez asked Mistress what the tone of the room was when they returned to the workroom this episode after Robin Fierce's elimination and also the fight in Untucked between Malaysia and Marsha. Mistress started by addressing that the episodes of Drag Race had been cut to 40 minutes and said that a lot of stuff had been cut out. But Mistress made the point that the episodes were cut by MTV and not Drag Race, and fans shouldn't be coming for the Drag Race editors because it wasn't their fault that the episodes were cut and they're just doing their best. But Mistress said that because a lot was cut from the show, it makes the episodes a bit hard to understand sometimes because a lot of the context got cut out. Mistress said that in Untucked, although we saw the fight between Malaysia and Marsha, there was actually an unaired fight that was even worse between Marsha and Selena S. Titties. Apparently, while they were writing the lyrics for the girl group challenge, Selena's verse was all about, quote, tamales and quesadillas, and Marsha told her that she needed to bring it back to country music, and that caused an argument between the two of them. But Mistress said that it was just a misunderstanding and they sorted it out. Mistress then said that one of the queens told her what had happened in Untucked and that Malaysia wasn't happy about Mistress and her group when they argued about getting the metal category for the girl group challenge. And that's why Mistress brought it up and confronted Malaysia about it. Mistress said that she could understand that Malaysia didn't want to talk about it, but then said that Malaysia brought Mistress's name into the conversation so Mistress was within her rights to ask her about it. Mistress then said she couldn't talk too much about production and what happened, but she said that after that moment happened, she and Malaysia were put in separate vans back to the hotel and were put on, quote, ice, which means that the queens aren't allowed to talk to each other. And this was likely because the producers didn't want Mistress and Malaysia to resolve the drama off camera because they wanted to capture everything on camera. And Mistress then said that Malaysia was actually more annoyed at Lux Noir London because she knew that Mistress was only joking during the argument, but Lux wasn't joking. And Mistress said that she was only joking about wanting metal and didn't actually care that much, but she thought that the others knew that she was joking and didn't realise that they were actually being serious. They then moved on to the part in episode 7 which was the acting challenge, the Daytona Wind part 2, and host Caramel brought up the moment where Mistress convinced Aura to switch roles with her, which meant that Mistress got the lead role which is what she had wanted all along. And Caramel said, quote, Mistress reverse psychology Brooks, you got the part you wanted, and everyone laughed. Mistress then explained that she honestly didn't do it on purpose and said that Aura didn't understand any of the Drag Race references in the script. And Mistress said to Aura that if she messes it up, it's going to affect the whole group because this is the lead role. And that's why Aura decided to switch roles with Mistress. Mistress then said, quote, I would have done well in either part, so it didn't matter to me. They then moved on to the main challenge and Nasha asked if a lot of the content was cut out. Mistress said she wasn't sure if she was allowed to say this, but apparently, because so many of the queens couldn't remember their lines, they brought in a teleprompter. But that actually made it worse because the queens were just reading straight off the teleprompter rather than improvising. And Mistress added that the part where Spice had to stamp on the ants, apparently RuPaul was going back and forward with Spice for at least an hour to get Spice to do it properly. And Mistress was apparently doing lots of ad-libs and improv which made RuPaul laugh, and apparently at one point RuPaul told everyone to look at Mistress and said, quote, she's a star. So that may be part of the reason why Mistress won the challenge this week. The episode then finished and they were talking about Drag Race in general, and Lawrence said that on Drag Race UK, they were given about an hour and a half of assigned makeup time to put on their makeup for the runway. 
but they were allowed to use their one hour lunch break as extra time to put on their makeup if they wanted to. So a lot of people just didn't eat lunch because they used the time to do their makeup instead. And Lawrence wanted to know if it was the same for the American seasons. And Mistress said that it was the same on season 15. And she said that production provide everything you need, but some people would sneak off to do their makeup during the lunch hour. And Mistress said that on the runway for this episode, the only critique she got was from Michelle, who said that there was a slight fit issue with Mistress's outfit because the pants were a bit loose. And apparently Mistress said that she had lost weight because she wasn't eating, and the judges didn't say anything back to that and it got cut from the episode. Caramel then talked about production and said to Brooklyn Heights that Isis Couture had been at Roscoe's during Canada vs. the World and said that the reason she left the show was because of issues with production. And Caramel asked Brooklyn if she knew anything about that or if there was anything she wanted to clear up. And Brooklyn said, quote, I really don't about production. And Brooklyn went on to say that she is not a producer on the show, so she doesn't get involved in production. And Brooklyn said, quote, I show up to work and I do my job. Brooklyn then said that she is good friends with Isis and she doesn't know what Isis was going through, but she's proud of Isis for stepping away if that was what Isis needed. But Brooklyn then brought up what Isis had said at Roscoe's when she was there and Brooklyn said that she had an issue with it. Just to remind you, during Canada vs. the World, when Isis was at Roscoe's, she said that Brooklyn doesn't have a say in who gets eliminated and that Brooklyn is only the face of the show and has no actual power. Brooklyn said that she, quote, took offence to Isis's comment and said that she called Isis after Roscoe's and said, quote, girl, why would you say that? I absolutely do have a say. And apparently Isis said that she was just trying to defend Brooklyn because people were coming for Brooklyn online because of the eliminations and Brooklyn said that it was sweet of Isis to do that but what she said quote completely discredited me. Brooklyn then explained that she has a third of the decision making vote for eliminations along with Brad and Tracy and they all have equal power in the decision and Brooklyn also said that the producers do not tell them who to eliminate and it's completely the judge's decision. Naysha then asked if Brooklyn wears an earpiece the same way that RuPaul does and Brooklyn said yes but but said that she does not get fed critiques or told who to eliminate. And Brooklyn explained that the only thing she's fed through the earpiece is when to move on to the next queen or when to do the next line. They then moved on and Naysha asked Mistress about her relationship with Sugar and Spice as well as the rest of the cast. Mistress explained that she and Malaysia co-parent Sugar and Spice and said that she vibed with Sugar and Spice right away and has a close relationship with them. Naysha then asked Mistress if there was anyone in the season 15 cast that she didn't get on with. And Mistress said that she was a bit taken aback by what Aura had said about her last week at Roscoe's. Just to explain, last week at Roscoe's, Aura Mayari was one of the guests and said that she didn't vibe with Mistress and stayed away from Mistress because she felt like Mistress was always trying to start drama. Make sure you check out my video about last week's Roscoe's viewing party for the full story. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, back to Mistress and she said that she gets on with all the cast and she and Aura don't have any issues, so she was confused why Aura had said that. And Mistress also said that she's sure that Aura didn't have any malicious intent behind what she said and her feelings are valid. But Mistress said that she wasn't a fan of the way that Aura said it and was annoyed by what Aura had said because on that particular episode, which was last week's episode, they were talking about the word bully and what that means. And Mistress said that Aura's comments at Roscoe's just incited people to act even more crazy towards Mistress and also Lux, who were the two people that Aura had mentioned. And Mistress said that she thought Aura would have been, quote, more mindful of your words. And that's why Mistress responded to the situation on social media. But Mistress added that she doesn't have a beef with Aura. She was just surprised that Aura had said that because she and Aura do talk. Mistress then went on to say that some of the queens, such as Aura, but not exclusively, post on social media every week explaining what really happened during the Drag Race episodes and complain that so much was cut out which further ignites the fan base. Whereas Mistress said that she just stays quiet and thinks that the fans should just watch the show. And Mistress said that at the end of the day, it's a TV show, and some of the queens who complain about not getting screen time were, quote, boring as F in person, which is probably why they didn't get much screen time. 
Mistress then went on to say that one of the reasons why she was annoyed at what Aura had said about Mistress instigating drama was because Mistress wanted to make sure that, quote, our season is not boring. And Mistress made the point that off camera, the queens are not always friends and said, quote, let's be realistic and show an accurate representation on camera of what it's really like. Mistress also said, quote, I'm not a sweetheart, I'm a bee, whatever the girls say, believe it. And Mistress said that when she was on the show, she knew that because of the way that she was acting, she was going to potentially get a negative reception from the fans. But Mistress said that she didn't want the season to be boring, so she did it for, quote, the betterment of the season. And Mistress finished by saying that she respects everyone in her cast, even the queens that she had issues with, and said that it was, quote, disheartening to hear the comments that some of the queens had made about her. They then moved on and Naisha brought up the fact that Drag Race announced this week that from the 10th of March onwards, the episodes would be going back to 90 minutes. And Naisha made the point that Todrick Hall said in a statement on Instagram about the Real Friends of WeHo that Drag Race episodes would not be going back to 90 minutes ever and that the Real Friends of WeHo had no effect on Drag Race. If you want the full story on that, make sure you check out my video about this, I'll put a link in the description. And Naisha asked Mistress what the situation was and whether the fact that the Real Friends of WeHo was coming to an end was the real reason why Drag Race episodes were going back to 90 minutes. Mistress said that, quote, Todrick doesn't have any position at MTV. And Naisha asked whether Todrick was, quote, talking out of his ass and never knew what was going on. And Mistress said, quote, I don't know, I don't follow him. And everyone laughed. And Naisha asked Mistress whether Drag Race was always scheduled to go back to 90 minutes after the Real Friends of WeHo ended, or was it because of the fan reception? And Mistress said, quote, to my knowledge, it was because of the fan reception. Naisha then made the point about the Real Friends of WeHo and said that MTV should have just put the show after Drag Race and after Untucked and it would have been more successful and it wouldn't have received so much hate. And Brooklyn said that none of the cast of the Real Friends of WeHo knew that it was going to be on MTV and that it would affect Drag Race. And Brooklyn said that it was unfair that the cast was getting so much hate for a decision that wasn't theirs. And Caramel asked Brooklyn if she had heard this from Brad Goreski, who is on the Real Friends of WeHo and is also a judge on Canada's Drag Race. And Brooklyn said that it wasn't just Brad who was getting hate, it was the entire cast, but she said that Brad is associated with both shows and as a result, Drag Race was also getting hate from the situation, which was unfair. They then moved on to the audience Q&A, and an audience member mentioned the acting challenges and asked if they wheel out a monitor on the main stage so that the contestants and the judges can watch the footage at the same time. Mistress said that for this week's challenge, which was the Daytona Wind acting challenge, they didn't watch any of it, and they only saw the footage when it was aired on TV. Lauren said for the UK, each week they saw a rough cut of the raw footage with no computer graphics or music, but they did get shown the raw footage so they would have an idea of what the final edit would look like. And Brooklyn said that on season 11, they always watch the footage on the main stage and it's the same for Canada's Drag Race. But Lauren said that they play it really quietly and you can't always hear it on the main stage, so you only know if what you said was actually funny if RuPaul laughs. They then moved on to the Untucked episode for that week, and just in case you haven't seen it, one of the main things that happened was that Lucy Laduca kept saying that she was annoyed that she wasn't in the top that week, and she said it multiple times throughout Untucked, and the other queens seemed to be getting annoyed that Lucy kept mentioning it. And Naisha said that Sasha Colby had said that Malaysia and Lucy tend to, quote, victimise themselves and make it all about themselves. And Naisha asked Mistress what she thought about that. First, Mistress talked about Sasha and said that she felt that Sasha knew that she was joking when they were arguing in the previous episode about who was going to get metal and that they were just playing around. And that's why Mistress asked why Sasha was always trying to turn everything into a quote teaching moment when it was actually just a bit of fun. But Mistress added that she loves Sasha and has no beef with her. 
And then Mistress talked about Lucy and said that although she wouldn't use the word victimise, she does agree and felt that Lucy was getting mad at everyone for sharing their opinions, even though Lucy had asked for their opinions in the first place. Caramel then asked whether Lucy was, quote, shooting herself in the foot by acting like this and would end up getting the same treatment as Jan on season 12, and that producers might intentionally not give her the win to see how she'll react because it makes for good TV. And Mistress said that of course the producer's job is to make everything juicy and she joked that they were probably doing a chef's kiss when Lucy was acting like that and Mistress said that Lucy was quote setting herself up. And finally they got to the part in the untucked where Aura was eliminated and Mistress said that regardless of what Aura said about her, Mistress said that Aura is very talented and has some quote sickening drag. And Mistress said that there's always all stars and then Mistress joked and said quote she can get herself some real acting classes and everyone laughed. So there you go, there was the Roscoe's recap for RuPaul's Drag Race season 15 episode 7. What did you think of this week's episode? And who do you predict will win the season? Let me know in the comments. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!